Rush Food Go watches and things back again. Uh, this time we're taking a look at this new Suges. Um, if you're on AliExpress, it's the Suges Pilot Chronograph. If you're on the Suges website, it's the Chrono Heritage. Um, well, we know that it, it is uh, a new watch, a new homage of a of a Zenith El Primero. Let's get it off the uh, off the cushion and take a look. Okay, so here it is. The Suges Chrono Heritage manually wound chronograph featuring the Seagull 1902 movement. Uh, we've all seen this a million times in different Chinese made chronos. And nice to see here for a pretty reasonable price. I picked this one up in the recent sale uh, for a bit over $200, um, a bit under £200. I think if you go to the website now, it's a little more expensive, especially when you're getting it with both uh, the bracelet and the canvas strap option. But yeah, it kind of falls under that £200 threshold that I know some people have for buying kind of Chinese made homage watches. Uh, let's have a look at the stated, well, the stated dimensions are 37 mil um, in diameter. I get a, just a touch under that, my caliper is more like 36 and a half, kind of from these points here. Uh, a stated height of 14.5 mil. Um, I'm going to dispute that. I'm going to say it's more like 13.5. There's a fantastic bit of domed sapphire on there um, that does protrude somewhat, as you can see. But it's not the 14.5 that is stated. It's much more like 13.5. 47 mil lug to lug. A 20 mil lug opening uh, on the canvas on this canvas band that we've got here. Uh, there is a slight bit of taper from 20 to 18, and on the bracelet, which we'll have a look at at the moment, this also 20 mil tapers down to 18 and it's back up to 20 mil at the class that they're using uh, on the canvas. It weighs in at 70 grams. Uh, the bracelet in itself is 90 grams. Uh, so you just decide which uh, which one you prefer to go with. Um, it is 316L stainless steel, as mentioned on the case back. Water resistance of 50 meters. which is okay considering the amount of holes that have been cut in the case. Um, 50 meters, I, I, I guess, you know, not it's not usual to get much more for a mechanical chronograph. Uh, open case back as we've seen. Signed crown. Branded buckle. Well, looking great. Let's just have a look at the head of the watch. A nice radial brushing around the top surface. Brush sides. Finishing is quite nice, it's quite smooth. Uh, you've got that nice, as you can see, the nice polished chamfer. Running down the flanks, always nice to see that. It always breaks up a a polished case a bit nicer, I would say. We've also got pop 
polished lug tops as well. Again, a nice contrast, fairly sharp edges. I mean, we're not going to go into too much detail about the finishing on a sub £200 watch. It is what it is. Um, I'm just going to put this to the side for a second because I did say that it came with a bracelet as well. Um, and here is the bracelet. I've taken it off the bracelet, as you can see. Um, solid links. Kind of three link style. Polished sides. Perhaps not the finest of polishing. It's okay. Uh, a milled in a pressed outer clasp, branded of course. And a well, double push and double push deploying and a fairly flappy fold over. Uh, six levels of micro adjustment as well. Um, I guess we can talk about the bracelet a little later. One thing you will notice is that they don't have fixed, doesn't have fixed end links. They will, they attach with the, attach through the spring bar. So that's one thing to mention. It's pretty old school, I can't lie. for a second and we'll come back to the watch face and get it without some light okay really nice green and black in contrast there I don't have a, a, a green watch in my collection so it's the first one um, it's quite a it's quite a vibrant green actually I think on some of the um stock photos it looks a bit washed out but that's a really nice really nice green actually uh, and you can see the contrasting black on the chapter ring and the sub dials uh, applied markers uh, the ones that two four Eight and ten are slightly truncated to accommodate the subdials there. There's another three and nine or six. But they have a nice polished outer. Uh, we've got strangely kind of segmented hands, really. You can see there. almost kind of brushed steel outers and an inner painted black with a bit of loom as well. Um, I'm kind of yet to be convinced really about the handset. I get it wrong, finished quite well. I always think that at the end of it, you see that little bit of Black at the end always looks like perhaps it's missing a bit, but anyway, uh, it's just you know as much of this is just subjective. Uh, we have a almost a kind of lo lozenge on the end of the chrono hands, which of course is started for one push of the top pusher. and stopped and reset. There, the reset is a bit uh, of a softer push than the than the pretty hard click on and off of the chrono. Uh, what else can we say about the dial? We've got the branding suggests, kind of cursive script, and the only other text on there is the chronograph above the sub dial at six o'clock, uh, and the tachymeter on the chapter ring. 
uh, as mentioned before, this is the Seagull ST1902. So you might have seen a 1901 in lots of things, which has got a very similar setup with the running seconds at nine and a 30 minute counter at three. This one has got the addition of a, a kind of one handed 12 hour clock on the six o'clock subdial. It replicates the, the, the main time that we can see it on the dial there. So nearly 20 past, sorry, nearly 25 past three on the main dial. And that's kind of shown again, like I say, replicated again on that six o'clock subdial. Uh, interesting. Nice detailing there. Certainly with those subdials, you've got some different elements there, some sunburst elements. It's quite nice that there are there are different finishes, there are different levels of visual interest on the dial itself. Uh, speaking about the 1902 movement, manual wind chronograph, 45 hours of power reserve stated. Um, as we said, it's manual wind. Uh, it is a column wheel chronograph. Twenty one joules, three hertz, six ticks a second. And we can see some gold tone gearing, some decoration on some of the bridges there. Obviously some blue screws and uh, obviously the rubies, the, the, the jewels involved as well. So it's, you know, I mean, for what it's worth, it does look a bit, um, well, it's got a bit more interest in there, although it's, it's probably skin deep, let's be honest. And you can just see there in the corner as well, over here, you can see the swan neck regulator uh, used for much accurate, much more accurate regulation of the movement. Uh, it does have some loom, so bear with me a second and we'll just have a look at that. Okay, so luminescence. There is a bit of loom there. Even in the day, that's good. And you will notice that the subtitles have got a bit of loom on there as well. Is it going to last all night? Probably not. But you're probably not going to wear this one all night anyway. Okay, and there it is, seven inch wrist. It looks smart as anything. I mean, it would look even smarter if it didn't have loads of smudges on it. Looks really nice, super size. Okay, let's uh, let's summarize, shall we? Um, as all of these things, that's very subjective. Uh, certainly, don't listen to my point of view exclusively, or or at all. Um, as far as the positives and negatives are concerned, uh, the negatives. It's got to be the bracelet. The bracelet is. I mean, it's trash. Let's be honest. Um, the screw pins that are used. Um, some of them come out, some of them don't. This one will not come out. I tried to yank it out. I've ended up scratching bits and pieces and ruining the thread just because it would not come out. Um, so that's not ideal. And it's, you know, I know this is pretty old school where you've got non-attaching end links. Um, but yeah, you know, it's old school tech. It's almost as if we've got the bracelet. All we need to do is just fashion an end length and stick it on whatever bracelet we've got. It's not great, but it's okay. It usually, I mean, it comes with the the package. Uh, if it were, if I had my time again, I wouldn't bother with it. I just go straight to the canvas, which is okay. Um, another thing to mention about the end link is that 
it's not going to ma match the finishing um, either because as you can see that's brush finish and the the, uh, the the tops of the lugs there are, are, are polished so that's not ideal um, so yeah bracelet not so good um, <laughs> the six o'clock sub dial uh, you know I mean it, it, I guess it brings a bit of balance to the dial um, it looks kind of good but it, I mean come on do we need a replication of the of the main time on a sub dial probably not I mean if you know any reason why that would be there, then then do let me know. But I can't see that there's any point in that. Um, also, the font on the case back as well. I mean that all that needs is kind of pan pipes and an eagle uh, in the background. I mean that's pretty faux eastern. I don't think we need that. I don't think we need funny font on a watch. Let's be honest. Also, um, I did have it with me earlier. Oh yeah, the. Uh, this is the, you know, it's the, the, the manual. And it's got all of the different movements that, that Sujess use, although it doesn't have the 1902, which is in this watch. Uh, so again, um, not very good. I mean, the box that it arrived in was all mashed up as well. Like I say, um, I ordered it during the end of June sale. Actually arrived a couple of days ago on my birthday, which was really nice, but the box was mashed up. I'm not gonna um, blame Sujess for that. Um, but as far as the positives are concerned, well, I love the size, that kind of, th I'm feeling 37s at the moment, I can't lie. Um, it wears really well. The style, obviously, you know, we can't give too many props to suggest for the style. That's, that's much more um, Zenith's uh, input there, but it, it does look fantastic. I love the green as well. I don't have a green in, um, in my collection. There are other colors as well. So if you don't fancy the green look, then you know take a look at what else they've got and the value as well i mean this was what about 190 pounds for me um it's a mechanical chronograph for under, under 200 quid with super looks um a great size and you know it got delivered to me in a couple of weeks positives and negatives suggests Heritage Chronograph, aka Pilot Chronograph. Um, do check it out. I think um, I think there's a lot to like about this one, uh, and it will fit snugly into my collection. Anyway, Rochefoucauld watches and things with myself and the Green Suggests. We're out.